But if you concentrate and you fixate, use your willpower to hold that magnifying glass into one place, it, it, um, it, it um, magnifies the sun and it starts to burn a hole in the ground or whatever you set fire to the leaves, whatever you do, twigs. But it can only do that if you use your willpower to hold that, to hold your concentration. Welcome to the Prime Life Project Podcast, a place to help you unlock your full potential, both mentally and physically, to become the best version of you. Welcome back to another episode of the Prana Project Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel James, and today I want to talk about the thinking process. So we've covered a lot about thinking, we've covered a lot about thoughts, but I've not actually discussed the thinking process, and that's something I want to talk about today because I think a lot of us think that we're thinking, but we're not because mental activity does not constitute as thinking. But what we actually need to do is once we control those thoughts, we can then start to control our lives. I was doing a workshop literally a couple of hours ago today and I spoke about that old saying, when you change your thoughts, you change your life. But it's how about, well, how do you actually think? Like, what's that process actually look like? I'm not sure if I've asked this question before or not, but it's on a Thursday thoughts, things tend to roll into one, but you need to ask yourself the question about this week. Have you been controlling your thoughts or have your thoughts been controlling you? So this is something that I asked my clients in a workshop the other day and it's something that I tend to reflect on at the end of each day and give yourself a score out of seven. Now, when I spoke about this in a workshop earlier on today, I kind of realized that a lot of people struggle to go back and think of the last seven days. So if you're struggling to go back and think of the last seven days, how about I just think of the last three days? So the last three days, give yourself a score out of three. Have you been in control of your thoughts or have your thoughts been in control of you? And if you don't know the answer, ask yourself, how have you been feeling? because your thoughts lead to your feelings. So if you've been feeling negative, if you've been feeling low, if you've been feeling a certain way that does not serve you and that you would not like to feel, then that will then tell you that your thoughts have been controlling you. So give yourself a score out of three. And then I would then pose to you that every single evening before you go to bed, just ask yourself the question, have I been feeling today? Have I been in control of my thoughts? Have my thoughts been in control of me? Because that's a really interesting thing. But the goal should then be to notice and catch yourself when you're starting to be controlled by your thoughts and then course correct. But doing it from a place of curiosity and acceptance rather than anger and annoyance. Which is really good when we do all this work on self-development and reading all these books about controlling your thoughts and changing your thoughts, changing your life. And we know better. We know how to do better. But we don't do better. And we get caught in old habits, old patterns, old routines. It's really, really easy to get ourselves into a negative headspace where we start to judge ourselves, we start to get angry, we start to get annoyed at ourselves, and that doesn't serve a purpose. So when you start to notice that your thoughts have actually been controlling you, get a bit curious and ask yourself, well, well, why has that been? When did that start? How did that happen? Start to ask yourself the right questions, and then you'll come to the answer, you'll come to the core essence of what actually happened with that, rather than just beating yourself up, getting angry. Because remember... Most of us don't have that good relationship with ourselves anyway. So don't give yourself another opportunity to start beating yourself up, to start being annoyed, to start being angry. It doesn't serve you. Always come at it from a place of curiosity. So we've covered this before. I'm going to get Mikey to actually ping it up. If you're on Spotify or on YouTube, I'm going to send this over to Mikey so you can actually have a visual representation of this uh, when it comes to the Buddha wheel. And by how your identity leads to your thoughts. Your identity is how you see yourself behind closed doors. The way we speak yourself. I am stupid. I'm no good. I'll never amount to anything. That's on a subconscious level. So you can call it your identity. You can call it your subconscious programming. You can call it your paradigms. But that then leads to your thoughts. So then what are the thoughts? And thoughts over time lead to our beliefs. And beliefs are just thoughts that you keep on thinking. Now you can't control the thoughts that pop up. But you can choose whether you accept them or you reject them. Because then our thoughts lead to our feelings. And our feelings then lead to our actions. And what normally tends to happen is we've got this negative self-talk on a subconscious level. At least with thinking negative thoughts, we then have negative beliefs about ourselves and our capabilities, which then leads to us feeling negative, which then leads to us taking negative action, which then leads to us getting negative results, which then confirms to us the negative stuff we thought in the first place. This is the circle of life. And again, if you just look at the diagram, you'll be able to see it all they're laid out for you. So the goal should be new thoughts, because new thoughts lead to new ideas. Everything was once an idea. The phone you're watching this on or the laptop you're listening to this on was once an idea. This microphone was once an idea. Because once you get these new thoughts and these new ideas, it gives us new choices. And that's what people don't think they have. They don't think they have a choice. They think they're stuck in this negative thought cycle and you're not. New choices lead to new feelings, new actions, new results. And over time, it creates this new identity for yourself. So if we go back to that, your thoughts, you are the only one that can control your thinking. You are the only one that can control your thinking. Now, the workshop we did earlier on today, it's interesting how this is all sort of linked into the podcast I'm doing today. 
I got them to an activity and the guy said, yeah, but you're just getting us to control our thoughts. And I went, yeah. And he says, well, then we can't control them. I says, no, 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 no. I am getting you to control your thoughts. I'm commanding you to control your thoughts because you don't know that you can do it. I says, when I'm not here, you can do the same thing. And I says, I'm telling you to do something, but you are the one that's then actually thinking and doing it. So although he thought I was controlling his thoughts, I wasn't. I was just giving him a command. He then internalized it. He, that he then did the thinking, and then he went and created an image in his head. You are the only person that controls your thinking. No one else. But here's the problem. Because there's so much external influence, and you aren't aware that you can control your thoughts, other people are saying things, you're absorbing information that then is controlling your thinking. You're going onto autopilot. People are suggesting things to you and you're accepting it without any sort of question. There's no defense. You're watching the news, you're looking at stuff on social media, you're doing this, you listen to stuff from your parents, you listen to stuff from um, coworkers, whatever it is. And they are commanding you on a subconscious level. They're saying for you to do stuff and you're not even questioning it, you're just going ahead and doing it. And you're allowing them to hijack your thoughts but they're not hijacking it, you're doing it yourself. Because there's only two powers that you possess, the power to think and the power to act. They're the only two things that you can control. They're the only two powers you ultimately have, the power to think and the power to act. Now, there's a really good saying you may have heard before, where there's a will, there's a way. So your will is your willpower. So where there's willpower, there's a way. So when you have the willpower to do something, there's a way. But how about we change that to when, not where there's a will, when there's a will. When you execute your willpower, then there is a way. Your willpower is your ability to fixate and concentrate on an idea, to concentrate your thoughts. So the analogy I use with this is like a magnifying glass. So if you hold a magnifying glass and just move it around, that's your concentration, that's your willpower, you're just moving it around, nothing really happens. But if you concentrate and you fixate, use your willpower to hold that magnifying glass into one place, it, it, um, it, it um, magnifies the sun. And it starts to burn a hole in the ground or whatever you set fire to leaves, whatever you do, twigs. But it can only do that if you use your willpower to hold that, to hold your concentration. That's the problem. Our thinking is all over the place. It's erratic. We're not holding it on one idea. We're not holding it on the person that we want to be. We're not holding it on the, the, the vision, the goals that we've got. We're letting it scatter. You wake up in the morning and you may be motivated. Today I'm going to smash this out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to move my life forward. And then you're easily distracted. Or TikTok. Or social media. Or friends. Or TV. Or computer games. Whatever it is. And it shifts you, your attention shifts. Your attention is the most powerful thing that you have and it's your willpower that actually determines it. So your willpower is when you give yourself command to think a certain way and do that certain thing. You have the ability to command yourself to do stuff. We just don't exercise it. Close your eyes right now, think of anything. Just command yourself to think. Command yourself to think of anything and guess what, you'll think about it. Because you are in control. You're in control of your thoughts. You're not in control of what pops up, but you can create new thoughts and you can question and you can choose. That is the difference. And if you aren't happy with the results in your life, it's always your thinking process that needs to change. It's your thinking that needs to change. So then ask yourself, what is the dominating thought that you're having? Throughout the day, throughout a 24-hour period, what is the dominating thought that you're having? Is it positive or is it negative? So again, when I say dominating thought, that only means it has to be 51% a certain way. So 49% of the time you're positive, well cool, the dominating thoughts are 51% negative. So guess what? That's the dominating thought. That's what you're gonna be attracting most into your life. But you have to ask yourself the question. If you aren't happy with the results in your life, it is your thinking that needs to change. Change starts from the inside out, not the outside in, and that's where people get this wrong. They try and change things outside of themselves. The only thing you can change is you. How you approach a situation, how you respond to a situation, how you handle a situation, how you reframe a situation, the questions that you ask yourself, it all comes from you. It's your thinking process, it's your thinking patterns that need to change. And a key thing we ask ourselves is, we always say like, what am I doing wrong? What have I done wrong? What have I done to cause this? Whether this outcome may be the results, what have I done wrong? But all we need to do is just reframe this and we change this to ask ourselves, where is my thinking off? So not here, what have I done wrong? Where is my thinking off? Where, where am I, where's my thinking off? Because again, if you're going to do an activity and before you've even started it, you think that you're gonna fail, guess what? That's why you failed. Because you're thinking a certain way, you're feeling a certain way, and you're showing up in a certain way. 
But actually, if your thinking was different, and rather than you going in there with a defeatist attitude, you actually changed that and actually looked at it with a bit of optimism, a chance to grow, an opportunity to push yourself, to explore new things, whatever it is. You change how you approach the situation, the results that you get will change. It's very, very simple. It starts with your thinking. You need to change your thinking process. That is the one thing that you have complete and utter control over. But it's really easy to know when your thinking process is off. It's really easy to know this because it doesn't feel good. But here's the thing, most of the time what we do is, we just, when we don't feel good, we just, oh, put that in a box. Oh, we'll just put that in there. I was to go in the gym the other day. I was at Download Festival on Friday. And we're talking about alcohol and stuff like that. And we got into conversation about people using alcohol as an escapism. And then he turned to me and went, that's what people do with drugs, isn't it? And I went, yes, mate, that's exactly what they do. And he went, yeah, I know a few friends that do that. I went, yeah, interesting, isn't it? But people don't want to address. When we don't feel good and we start to feel negative, we try and escape. We don't actually want to address the issue, which is how we are feeling. Your feelings are trying to tell you something. Your feelings are trying to tell you something. It's like you're driving a car and the warning, engine warning light comes on. Now, some of you guys listen to this, may ignore it and just carry on driving and hope for the best. That'll only get you so far until the engine blows up. But normally what happens is this light goes on and you either look at the manual or you read what it says and you do something about it. That's what our emotions and our feelings are trying to tell us. They're trying to tell us that something's not quite right. When you actually start to address it and unpick it, that's when you can actually do something about it. So are you actually using your willpower to command yourself to do things that will move you forward? Are you even exercising this right? Because here's the thing. I understand that most people don't even know they can do this, and that's the problem. That's why I love doing these podcasts. That's why I'm trying to give you guys this information because it's something that really changed my life. Even to this day, one of the biggest things I do, like you, people see me, uh, say many KG friends most of the time with me, uh, and sometimes I'm in my head a lot. But I'm in my head thinking. And what I'm normally doing is if, I, if I'm having a bad mental health day, I'll be a bit quiet. And the reason why I'm a bit quiet is because I'm trying to figure out this thought pattern that I'm in. I'm commanding myself to change. I'm commanding myself to think differently. But again, you've always got that pull. Especially, again, if I'm tired, I lose that ability to do it. Because, again, remember, thinking requires energy. But it's an unlimited force that we have. Your power to think is, is inexhaustible. You can think continually. The problem is we don't start to think in the first place. There's nothing wrong with just taking some time to go inwards and having a conversation with yourself and trying to fig fix out what's going on, figure out what's going on. It's so, so empowering. And when you see these negative, intrusive thoughts coming in, command yourself the opposite. Start to question. You have this authority. You are in control of your thinking. Your thinking should not be in control of you. And if your thinking is in control of you, it goes back to the workshop we spoke about, about the negative thought patterns. That's how we get in those negative thought patterns. We've got the present moment, and what we're doing is we're either stuck in the past, thinking about what has happened, and we're just stuck there. We're stuck there in this negative loop. Or we're worried about the future, about the what ifs. We're stuck. Either time, we're not being present in the moment. And again, as someone, um, uh, a mentor of mine said to me uh, in a workshop, he mentioned about the present moment is the only time you can fix something. So when these negative thoughts are happening, you in the present moment, you can then assess these thoughts. You can question your thoughts. You have the ability in the present moment to change it. Because we've all told stories about ourselves, this story that's happened in the past. I think he used the example, uh, when I was on uh, Mikey's podcast, where I shared a story about an ex-girlfriend of mine. I was sharing the story on Mikey's podcast, and halfway through, I think I got to the end of the story, and I said, do you know what? I'm actually not quite sure how much that story is true. Because what happens is, I started to tell that story when I was in a victim mindset. And I wanted people to feel sorry for me. I wanted people to think, oh no, it's so terrible. Oh no, how could she do this? So then constructed a story to fit this victim mindset that I had. And I've told myself that story so many times. There's only now from this place of awareness, because I hadn't told the story for a while. After I told Mikey that story, it didn't feel right. Again, it didn't feel right. So then live on Mikey's podcast, I then said, I actually don't know how much of that's true. The facts are that this happened and this happened. But the rest of it, I can't actually tell you, hand on my heart, if I've made that up or not to fit a narrative. So what can happen is, what you do is you then bring that thought into the present moment and then you can start to ask questions. You can start to get to the root cause of it. You can start to think, you can start to probe and you can change the story. Because we're, all we're doing when we're going back into, the, the, into the, the, the past is we're just reconstructing something. And most of the time it's not even true. We've made it worse to fit a narrative, to fit this narrative we told ourselves about. Maybe we're the victim or we were hard done by. But that's not serving us. Your mind is like a garden, and only you can look after it. Just think about this. Your mind is like a garden. Now, if you went to a flower show, and everyone could see your garden, 
would you be proud of it? Which is really easy to pretend we're okay. But I'm talking about like, you can't hide it. Your mind's a garden and everyone can see it. Would you be proud of your garden? Would you be proud of the thoughts that you are having on a daily basis? If the answer is no, it's time for you to actually do some gardening. It's time for you to pull out those weeds. Because again, remember, the subconscious mind is like a fertile soil. Your conscious mind plants the seeds into the fertile subconscious mind. If you've got weeds growing everywhere, it means that your thinking, your past thinking, has planted weeds into your subconscious. You have to become aware of them and you have to do some gardening. The best way of doing this is journaling, gratitude journaling, but every single day doing a bit of a cleanup. And this is something I'm going to completely butch this, but in a, in a book I'm reading, it talks about if you listen to this podcast right now, everyone's got a dream of designing their own home. So if I said to you, cool, we're going to design our own home, funds are unlimited, you would take the time to get the best of everything. The best material, the best, um, the best furniture, everything would be top of the range. You'd have the latest of everything. It'd be absolutely incredible. You would spend so much time, energy, and effort creating this perfect home for yourself. Yet we don't do it with our actual home, which is our minds. You spend more time inside your own head than anywhere else, yet we spend no time actually looking at it and thinking, hmm, this isn't any good. You need to do a mental house cleaning. You need to start to tidy up your own house. You need to start to tidy up your own garden. No one can do it for you. I can give you the best information on this podcast, but if you're not willing to do it, it's not going to work. You have to want to do it and hold yourself accountable to it and don't allow yourself to make excuses. And once you start to get the results, once you start to feel better, don't then start to compromise because that little voice inside your head, that paradigm, is going to say to you, ooh, we're okay now, we're sorted, we're all good. So it's like going on a diet. You go on a diet, you lose all the weight. Cool. You get to a certain weight, you're happy as Larry. You get the result that you wanted. You then go back to doing the thing you were doing before and then wonder why you got the result that that gave you. Cause and effect. Or cause and result. Let's call it cause and result. You want to change the result, you have to change the cause. If you change the cause, the result changes. The cause is your mind. The cause is your thinking. You have to change your thinking and it will change absolutely everything. If you took any value from today's episode, don't forget to like and share it with a friend. If you're on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're on Spotify or Apple Podcast, don't forget to give us a review. See you guys next week. Take it easy.